Scandinavian Rail Heart, we're developing the world's first four chamber artificial heart because no one should die from heart failure. Heart failure is a global problem with 64 million patients worldwide. And the issue is that this is such a deadly disease. 50% of patients die within five years of diagnosis. The best cure is a heart transplant but there aren't enough available. There's only about 8,000 donated organs in the world. And that's where we need an alternative. And that's an artificial heart. So the founder and inventor behind Real Heart is a medical doctor named Azad Najjar. And he saw a discovery documentary about artificial hearts. And he was thinking, like, why don't they look anything like the human heart? He thought, if we want to have a good artificial heart, it should be functioning like the human heart. He made uh, the first sketch of the real heart. And uh, now several prototypes later, we have what we call our clinical version and we're getting great results from it. We have two atria and two ventricles and in between we have an AV plane and it moves downward with each beat. And this is the same way that the human heart pumps. And the reason we do this is because with the natural pumping, flow, then we can achieve a natural blood flow. And this should minimize the blood-related side effects that many heart pumps have today. The way that we control the real heart is through an automatic algorithm. And we have pressure sensors in the artificial atria that measure how much blood comes in. So if it's a lot of blood that comes into the atria, then the pressure increases, which then signals to the heart that it needs to increase the pulse, for example, or it needs to increase the stroke volume, like how much blood is coming out in each heartbeat. So this algorithm is contained in the controller that's on the outside. So the information passes through a drive line that goes through the skin. And this is the controller that we're developing together with Hydrix. So in starting our work with Hydrix, we have redesigned the technology architecture because we realized we wanted to create more redundancy and so for example we have an implantable controller and an external controller and if there would be a communications problem with the driveline the internal controller makes sure that the heart doesn't stop and still continues to pump. So to create a really good quality of life for the patients it's what happens on the inside, how the pump works and then it's what happens on the outside. So the patient sees the cable, the controller, the batteries. That's what becomes really, really important for the patient. And that is why we're working with Hydrix, because Hydrix has such extensive knowledge of uh, user design and human factors design. And this is what we wanted to take into account when we're making what should be the best controller out there for heart failure patients. It's really, really important for us that we get quickly to the clinic because patients are out there dying right now and we don't want to redesign the wheel, right? We just want to make sure that we're building on existing knowledge and experience. And so in approaching Hydrix, we learned about the Ludo platform that does capture this knowledge from previous heart pump projects. What we saw is that with the Ludo system, it enables us to have a quick start, especially on developing the software for the later application. So basically having a parallel development of hardware and software. We're developing the RailHeart to be a permanent destination therapy, as it's called. But the way to reach the clinic will be to first help the patients that are on the waiting list and as it's called, bridge them to transplant. Make sure that they don't die as they're on the waiting list to keep them alive. And then once we've shown that this works really well in transplant patients, then the next step is to take it to destination therapy. Every conference we go to, clinicians come up to us and they ask us how they can help us because there's such a need now for a good artificial heart to not only save the lives of heart failure patients, but also to improve the quality of life with heart failure.